and thank you for joining me on the show today. This is the Now Talks, a collection of inspiring personal stories and leadership lessons from some of the world's most iconic leaders. It is the weekly podcast for women in leadership brought to you by Nations of Women. My name is Dr. Tina Alton, and I'm your host for today and the coming weeks. Welcome again to another episode. Uh, This week, I have a question for you. Have you been dreaming of starting your own business, but you find that you're being held back, perhaps? I don't know. Is it fear? Is it doubt? Or is it actually procrastination? If it is any of these, then you are in the right place today because we're going to dive deep into some of the common obstacles that as women we face when it comes to starting our own businesses. And I'm also going to sharing, uh, be sharing some actionable strategies to help you overcome them. So after all that, there will be an exciting opportunity for you to join our business school for women, specifically designed to help you to get started and also to grow your business. So let's get right in. Number one, I know for an absolute fact that as women and myself included, wait, 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 back then, because I'm no longer in that same space. But even having got the opportunity to work with many other women who eventually also overcame their challenges, I think the number one or the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that stands in the way of women starting their business is fear. So I have a question for you. When you really look deep down inside, do you have fear? Are you dealing with fear? What is the question that is keeping you stuck around the issue of fear? Why are you not starting your business? Because you know that you have a great idea. You've dreamt about it. You know, you can even see in your mind's eye how this is business is going to be, how it's going to help others. We're going to do all of those things. I'm absolutely convinced because no one, you know, dreams or gets an idea for a business without dreaming about all these things. And maybe it's not your business. Maybe it is your life. Maybe it is your leadership journey. I don't know. But you have the answer. What is in the way? So I want us to confront the fear that we have or the fear that you have. And I'm going to break it down to some different aspects of fear that I've come to know is the reason why sometimes as women, you don't get to start your business or you fail to grow your business or maybe even just pursuing your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. And um, for some people, even paying the price of not fulfilling your purpose. So fear of failure. Fear of failure can be paralyzing. And the truth is everybody goes through that sometimes. At some point in your life, you will, without a doubt, go through. But you don't have to stay there forever. You don't have to give it, you know, a seat in the sofa. You don't have to make a bet for it, right? Fear of failure happens to everybody and it can be paralyzing. And when you entertain it for so long, it can actually prevent you from taking the leap into your entrepreneurship journey. However, failure is often a very necessary path or a very necessary step, actually, on the path to success. So next time you're thinking about your business or wanting to get started and you have this fear of failure, remember it is actually a good, good step to the journey or to the road to being successful. The other thing is fear of rejection. We all have experienced that before. The fear of rejection can hold you back from sharing your idea or even reaching out for support. It's essential to recognize it's not a reflection of your worth or your potential. Your identity is not in, you know, you asking for help or 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 wanting, you know, somebody to support you. That's not your identity. Your identity is way, way, way more than that. So the next time perhaps 
you ask somebody for help and they say no, that's okay. That's okay. Ask the next person. Keep asking, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking until you get the yes. Because I promise you there is somebody out there that will help you. And you might say, well, Tina, you don't know. Because I've been asking, asking, well, that's why we're starting the business school for women. And we are all about helping you with that yes, you know, that you need to get you started and for some of you to actually get you growing. There's also the fear of change. Stepping into the unknown can be daunting, but it's where you grow and where all the opportunities, you know, often lie. So embrace the change and the uncertainty is also crucial for both your professional and your development and your personal development, right? We don't always have to know everything that lies ahead of us. I think that would make us, you know, something more than human beings, but we're not God. We're not gods, right? We're not God to know everything that lies ahead. So sometimes that unknown, that's how you grow. That's how you stretch. That's how you actually discover, you know, some of your, your greatest strengths. So if you're not getting started because of that, because it's daunting, then we're here to help you overcome that fear of the unknown. So here's some action steps for you. Write down what is it that is holding you back? What fear is holding you back from starting your business? And then try and reframe it. Is it a challenge to overcome rather than an obstacle? Or, or what is it, right? Reframe it, reframe it, reframe it, reframe it. Your biggest friend should always be reframed. Reframe it as a challenge. That will help you to overcome it rather than framing it or seeing it as an obstacle because that then would be in your way. And another tip is always, there's always that invitation for you. Join or find or join a supportive community or network of other aspiring female entrepreneurs because we all know that we're some of the five people we hang out with. So surround yourself with, you know, the women that are also on the same journey as you so that you can get encouragement, motivation, and who knows, you might even be inspired to new heights. So you're always welcome to join us in Nations of Women. The next thing I, I want us to discuss as to why, you know, starting a business is overcoming doubt. Self-doubt can sabotage you, even in the midst of promising ideas. It's no good having the greatest idea if you doubt yourself. It is essential to recognize your strengths and the fact that, you know what, no matter what has gone behind you, you're not your mistakes, you're not your past. And even in the uncertainty that you may find yourself presently in, you're still not your mistakes. You're not the challenges that you're facing. So don't doubt who you are. Don't doubt who you've been called to be. Don't doubt what is placed inside of you. I know for an absolute fact, you know, we, we all know that when we were created, right, we were created for good works, for greater works. There is good stuff for you to do. And your business is supposed to help other people, be a blessing to others. So don't doubt the fact that you have something bigger inside of you and that you have what it takes. Maybe not all of what it takes, but for now you have the first step it takes and that is the idea that you already have. And so next time you doubt yourself, Stand up straight, look yourself in the eye and remind yourself, call out your name and say, hey, I know I was created for greater works. Another thing around the issue of doubt is doubt comes when we compare ourselves to others. Comparison is the greatest thief of joy and constantly measuring yourself against others can erode your confidence. Focus on the unique journey that is ahead of you. Focus on the uniqueness of who you are and celebrate your progress. Now, if you look at your finger, your fingertips, right, your thumbprint, your thumbprint is different. Even if you're a twin, 
your thumbprint will be very different. That tells you that you're unique and therefore there is really no point whatsoever in comparing yourself to others because the result of that is doubt and that will kill your joy. Past failures. Past failures can sometimes haunt us, but they also provide you valuable lessons. Instead of dwelling on the past mistakes or challenges or errors that you made, use them as stepping stones towards your future, right? The past failure doesn't mean that it's going to be the same now. Now you're doing it different. So here's your action challenge. Create a list of what you've done that was great i.e. some of the things you've achieved, what are the strengths that you know you have, what is it that makes you come alive, and refer to it whenever you feel, you know, like you're doubting yourself or you or, or self-doubt in any shape or form creeps in, remind yourself of your capabilities, remind yourself that you're unique, remind yourself that you have got what it takes, and remind yourself that you were created for greater works. And a practical way is, be compassionate, you know, same way that we're compassionate and kind to other people. Give that to yourself. Treat yourself with the same level of understanding and encouragement. When you make a mistake or something is not as you thought it would be, be kind to yourself. Because you do the same if it was a friend, so why not you? And another reason why, you know, starting your business, is it procrastination? Ooh, the word, the P word, procrastination. Now, procrastination can sometimes show up like perfectionism. We want everything to be perfect. So perfectionism actually leads to procrastination. As a woman waiting for the perfect moment to start, oh my gosh, that's never going to come. The right time and the only time you have, my dear friends, is now. So, Prolific, my dear friend, uh, uh, Daniel Priestley would often say, prolific beats perfection. Get started, then perfect it. Get started, then readjust it. Get, you know, get started, then refine it. Get started, then review. Get started, get started, get started, get started. Don't wait to have everything perfectly laid out before you get started because that will Ultimately, I promise you 100% will lead to procrastination. Sometimes procrastination also comes because of a lack of clarity. Without the clear plan or vision, it's easy to procrastinate on taking any action whatsoever. So break down your goals into smaller, manageable steps to help you avoid feeling overwhelmed. And that's what we want to help you in the Nations of Women Business School is to help you clarify your vision. And from there is now helping you to break these into, you know, really small manageable steps that it's like laying, you know, it's like Lego pieces, right? You you get this piece and that piece and that piece and that piece and that piece of building blocks. Each piece that you add now locks it in. So um, having clarity of vision is important. And without a clarity in your vision, you're going to have a sense of overwhelm. And that will absolutely, without a doubt, lead to procrastination. Another reason why you know procrastination comes is sometimes actually the fear of success. The fear of success can be just as paralyzing as the fear of failure. Some people is, I'm afraid I'm gonna fail. What if I am successful? Right? It doesn't matter. Acknowledge your worthiness of success and embrace the opportunity that it brings. Because when you're successful, guess what? You get to be a blessing in other people. Your success is not just for you or your family. It's so that other people may benefit from it. You may be able to employ other people, your suppliers, all of this. So many benefits for being successful in your business. So here's some action steps you can take. Set aside a dedicated time each day, each week to work on your business idea. Even if it's just for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or half an hour. It is important. Why? Because consistency is key to overcoming procrastination. So don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate at all. Right. And a tip is write down your vision. Visualize. Visualize what 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 the successful business looks like. Write your vision down. And write your goals down. Keep it at the forefront of your mind. Because where there is no vision, 
you know, the people perish where there's no vision, there's no order, there's no, it just makes it all very, very crazy, right? So here's some takeouts, courage to begin. Starting your business requires some courage, but the rewards are worth it. So embrace fear as a sign that you're actually pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone because staying in your comfort zone helps nothing, actually brings nothing. Be confident in your capabilities, no matter what has gone behind you, your past, you know, failures or past challenges, you're capable of something. So take confidence in that. Believe in the fact that you are created for good works, for greater works. And what it takes to, you know, birth that business idea is already inside of you. You're capable of achieving those dreams, those goals. Yes, you will encounter setbacks along the way, but it's not for the entirety. It's not for eternity. It's always for a season and a time. Be consistent in your actions because consistent actions will be what yields results for you. So overcome fear, the doubt, the procrastination requires that you're consistent in your actions, consistent in taking steps, even if it's small, taken each day will compound and significantly help you to progress over time. And the simple of the benefits of starting your own business is the freedom and flexibility that you get. Being your own boss allows you to create a schedule that works for you, maybe works for your children, um, and pursue your passions on your own terms. It helps you to grow as a person because entrepreneurship often comes with opportunities for continuous learning and development, both professionally and personally, and also entrepreneurship. Let's not, let's not. Um, pretend entrepreneurship is is not always easy, but it is fun, and the 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 times where you have to stretch right is your opportunity to grow. The other big side of that is impact and the legacy you get to leave. Building a successful business enables you to make a positive impact on your community, on other people, and in some cases helps you to leave a lasting legacy for future generations to come. So here's a thought for you. If you're ready to turn your dreams and your aspirations and your idea for business into reality, and you're ready to embark on the exciting journey of entrepreneurship, then here is your invitation to join the Nations of Women in Business School. Our comprehensive program will provide you with the knowledge, the resources, and the support you need to success. So don't let fear, don't let doubt, don't let procrastination or anything hold you back any longer. Take the step towards your future today. And if you have any questions or any thoughts or anything else you'd like us to discuss in our podcast, then by all means, do reach out and let us know. Until I come your way next week, remember the time that you have, the only real time you have is now. God bless. And that's all for this week. You've been listening to Dr. Tina Alton with the Now Talks, the weekly podcast for women in leadership, brought to you by Nations of Women. All that remains is for me to say, have a fantastic week, stay safe, and reach out if you need any help now at nationsofwomen.com. Until next time, enjoy the pursuit of your potential. And remember, now is your time.